Welcome back to the Skin Physiology and Biochemistry playlist. This is also in the Anatomy and Physiology playlist, and certainly if you're in my Anatomy and Physiology lab, I do require you to watch this video as homework. You're responsible for this material on the exam, okay? And in this video, we're going to talk about a very important molecule for everybody's skin, and that's a molecule which is known as melanin. So in this video, we're focused on the molecule known as melanin. And why do you ask is it so important that I have you learn it? Well, melanin is probably the primary way that your skin protects the DNA under, in the underlying tissues. One of the things that might not be apparent to you is that DNA can mutate, okay? Um, and what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna show you um, a mechanism of how it would do it. The following thing I'm, I'm about to show you is not going to be on the exam, okay? We don't have a prerequisite of organic chemistry for this class, so I can't ask it, but it's just for your information and hopefully you'll be able to follow it just a little bit. Okay, so I've switched to paintbrush now. Basically what I'm illustrating here, okay, these two molecules right here, these are thymines that would be present in your DNA. Okay, so recall that thymine was a pyrimidine, a nitrogenous base that's located in your DNA. Okay, now what can end up happening is, let's say I expose thymines to light, which is typically abbreviated as HV. So you expose these thymines to light, a very dangerous reaction could potentially occur. And what ends up happening is this double bond right here can split. One of these electrons ends up on this carbon, the other electron ends up on this carbon. And you can sort of see it right here in this um, picture right here. The same thing can happen to this particular thymine. One of these electrons can end up on this carbon, the other electron can end up on this carbon. So this particular type of, of bond cleavage is called a homolytic bond cleavage. These are very dangerous in biochemistry because they can cause mutations. And this is, thymines are particularly susceptible to this when you expose them to ultraviolet light, okay? So what can end up happening then is you have these two thymines now with radical electrons, and so now what can happen is they can couple. So these radical electrons can couple like this, this one can couple with this, and so what you end up getting is a linkage, a covalent linkage between two thymine molecules in your DNA. And this particular type of molecule has a special name because it does happen quite a bit. It's called a cyclobutane thymine dimer. This is a mutation, okay? Now, you do have enzymes to fix this, but wouldn't it be nice if you could prevent this from even happening in the first place? And to prevent this from happening in the first place, that's what ultimately leads us to melanin. So now I've switched back to PowerPoint. And what melanin essentially is, is it's a protection against UV light from the sun. Okay, so UV light comes from the sun. And what's important to realize about UV light is it's actually quite an energetic form of light. And it's energetic enough to pierce through the cells of your skin and hit underlying tissue thymines and other DNA bases and so forth and cause mutations like this. So it's energetic enough to do that, okay? So it would be nice if you could stop the UV light before it gets to those underlying tissues. And it turns out that molecules like melanin actually help prevent the UV light from reaching those molecules, okay? So what we're gonna do now is I'm gonna show you a picture of part of a melanin polymer. Melanin is basically a polymer of these repeating units that we're gonna talk about in the next video. Um, the units basically consist of two molecules. One of them is called dihydroxyindole. The other is called dihydroxyindole carboxylic acid, okay? In fact, usually the way they're abbreviated is they're abbreviated as DHI, that's for dihydroxyindole, and the other one is DHICA, that's for dihydroxyindole carboxylic acid. And these are the main two monomers that make up a melanin polymer. And the melanin itself is what protects the underlying DNA, okay? 
And what we're going to do right now is kind of go over the mechanism as to how that occurs. Okay. Now I'll tell you what I want you to know. There's some extraneous information that's really just for your education, but I'm going to tell you what you need to know. What you need to know is you need to know that number one, melanin protects the underlying tissue's DNA from UV light. Okay. Because if the underlying DNA absorbed light, then this type of reaction that I showed you in paintbrush might occur. And mutation can lead to things like cancer. So cancer is caused by mutation. And certainly cancer could be lethal. So you'd like to protect the DNA. Okay, so here's a key thing. Free radicals in DNA are extremely dangerous because this leads to mutation, cancer, and death. And that's certainly something that we'd like to avoid. So the way that your, your body gets around it is it has these, these cells called melanocytes. So this particular cell right here, this is called a melanocyte, okay? And a melanocyte is located in your skin, and it's basically a cell that's specialized for biosynthesizing melanin, okay? And we'll see how it works in just a few minutes, okay? But it's, it's specifically made to help protect your, your underlying DNA from UV light. So one thing I want to go into really quickly is I mentioned earlier that UV light is very energetic. Okay, so this UV light is extremely high in energy, so high energy. Now, what ends up happening is when the light strikes it and gives the energy to the thymines, it causes the electrons to go into a higher energy state. Okay, this higher energy state is called the excited state. Okay, so when electrons go into a higher energy state, we call that the excited state, and that occurs when light strikes it. Okay, so what happens is when the electrons go into the excited state, it makes the DNA very reactive and susceptible to forming things like this. Okay, but what ends up happening in the case of melanin is light instead is stopped by the melanin. So when light is absorbed by the melanin, electrons within the melanin increase in energy and go into an excited state. You could sort of think of melanin as like the border patrol. Okay, so the border patrol or melanin wants to keep the UV light out. UV light is bad. It can mutate DNA, so you'd like to keep it outside. So what ends up happening is the melanin will absorb the light. It'll take the hit instead of the DNA. So it's like giving itself up. So the melanin will absorb the light instead of the DNA. In fact, it's very efficient at it. In fact, a known number is that out of the a percentage of UV light that's absorbed by the melanin is about 99.9%. .9%, so it's very efficient. About 99.9% .9 of the UV light is actually absorbed by the melanin. Only 0.1% actually gets through. So it's very efficient at stopping the UV light. And this is a key point right here right here. When the light is absorbed by the melanin, the electrons within the melanin increase in energy and go into an excited state instead of the DNA. Okay, So whenever light strikes something, electrons go into an excited state. But wouldn't it be nice if that happened to the melanin instead of your DNA? Okay. Now what's going to happen, and this is something I don't require you to know for the test, is that there's a specific quantum mechanical process that happens called internal conversion. Okay, um, You're welcome to name this as internal conversion, but essentially what this means is that when light strikes the melanin molecule itself and the electrons go up in energy, instead of fluorescing, um, what ends up happening is a process called internal conversion occurs. And what ends up happening is the energy is released as heat. Okay, so the energy from UV light is dissipated as heat. Okay, so heat is basically going to be harmless to us. Okay, at least the amount that's produced by the melanin. Whereas if instead the melanin fluoresced or it gave up a photon, it would cause more damage. So the genius in the design of melanin is instead of doing something like fluorescence or instead of doing something like photon emission or anything like that, there's a radiationless transfer of energy that's released as heat. Okay.
So let's do a quick recap of this slide. It's very important. Okay, the purpose of melanin is to protect the underlying DNA. Stop the UV light before it gets to underlying tissues. So light is going to strike. Light is going to strike the melanin molecule. Okay, and the electrons in the melanin molecule will go up in energy. Okay. The electrons within the melanin will go up in energy. In fact, it's this process right here. So this process of absorption, this is absorption of the photon, the photon of light, of UV light, UV. So what ends up happening is the electrons go up in energy, right? They go up to this higher excited state. So this right here, this represents the excited state for the electrons. But instead of doing fluorescence, they simply undergo a process called internal conversion. Okay, they do internal conversion and then a little bit of vibrational relaxation to get back down to the ground state. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. The photon is absorbed by the melanin, electrons go into an excited state, and then internal conversion occurs, whereby which the electron relaxes back down to the ground state. Okay, and basically the idea behind internal conversion that's really important is no photon gets released. So we absorb the photon, absorb the energy, but we don't release a photon. We simply dissipate the energy as heat. Okay, something that's virtually harmless. That is something that is incredibly important to understand. So basically what I would ask you on the test is I'd ask you how melanin functions. And your answer would basically be, it protects the DNA from ultraviolet light from the sun by acting as the border patrol. Instead of doing this to the DNA, the light strikes the melanin, causing melanin's electrons to go up in energy, and then internal conversion occurs by which the energy from the photon absorbed gets dissipated as heat. Okay, And that is melanin's mechanism of action. Okay, so hopefully that made a little bit of sense. Um, basically, in the next few videos, we're gonna, basically going to go over the synthesis of the monomers of melanin. There are various types of melanin. We'll go over the synthesis of those monomers. Okay, but I just wanted to give you a basic understanding of what melanin is on the molecular level. You're not responsible for any structures or anything. That would be saved for a biochemistry course. What I want you to understand is the mechanism of action of melanin. Okay, and in the very next video, we're going to look at this slide and we're going to go over the function of the melanocyte, the cell that synthesizes melanin. So I hope this video helped. Your homework next is to watch the next video on melanocyte function. See you in the next video.